Good morning and welcome. Let's begin by singing hymn number 327. I'll read the first verse. The God who made both heaven and earth and all that they contain will never quit his steadfast truth nor make his promise vain. Hymn number 327. I'll read from the Bible, Psalms. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou saddest in the throne, judging right. Let's pray for the congregation, first in silence, then we'll pray together the Lord's Prayer. I'll read the spiritual interpretation given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent supreme. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all, and all. Let's sing hymn number 246. O oh, thou who spreadest the heaven like a tent, he who depends on thee ne'er is forspent. Still for his might on thee he ever counteth, on wings of eagles he unwearied mounteth. Have ye not heard, have ye not known, the everlasting God, creator is of heaven and earth, and he alone is Lord. Hymn number 246. This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. 
We hold Sunday services at 11 a.m. and Wednesday testimony meetings at 7.30 p.m. The Wednesday testimony meeting includes singing hymns, reading from the Bible and the Christian Science textbook, and the opportunity to hear how people are living what they are learning from their study of Christian science. We also have services in Spanish, Sundays at 1 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. All services will be held online and in person. We thank you for observing social distancing and for wearing a mask. Third Church's reading room is open and all are welcome. The reading room provides a quiet place for prayer and study. You may also purchase books and recordings on Christian Science there. Reading room hours are Monday through Friday from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Third Church offers Sunday School classes online for kids and teens. These free one-hour classes will be held each Sunday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. At Sunday School, students learn how much God loves them and cares for them. They also learn about the Bible characters and lessons and the healing power of truth. If you know of children and teens who may be interested, please send us an email, thirdchurch at thirdchurchnyc.com. Tenth Church in New York invites you to a free online lecture titled, Why Everyone is Needed and What That Means, given by James Shepard on Tuesday, December 15th, at 7 p.m. For more information, please visit their website, 10thchurchnyc.com. Third Church NYC invites you to a Christmas talk by Lana Ingberson, CS. Her talk, Christmas, It's All About Love, will be live on the Third Church website, thirdchurchnyc.com. That's December 24th at 7.30 p.m. I'll read from the Manual of the Mother Church, A Rule for Motives and Acts. Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the, mother church, of the members of the Mother Church. In science, divine love alone governs man, and a Christian science reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil, from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, influencing, or being influenced erroneously. The solo sung by Jenny Lynn Stewart is titled, In Silence He Came. The words and music are by Joseph M. Martin, who incorporated the tune of Still, Still, Still from a traditional Austria, Austrian carol. In silence he came with grace soft as snowfall, hushed was creation awaiting his cry. The voice of his mother preached. Yeah. 
Thy gentle blue shadows fell soft on the star. The glory of heaven came down for us all. Jesus was Thank you. Friends, the Bible and the Christian Science textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural texts and their correlative passages from our denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible texts in their spiritual import and application to all ages, past, 
present, and future constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses, and divinely authorized. Today's sermon can be found on page 4 of the full-text edition of the Christian Science Quarterly and page 40 of the Citation Edition. The subject is God the Only Cause and Creator. The golden text from Genesis is from the Common English Bible. God saw everything he had made. It was supremely good. The responsive reading is from Jeremiah and Isaiah. Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good. Now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. I have declared and have saved, and I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. The following citations comprise our sermon. The Bible. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made, Genesis, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. Ecclesiastes, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. Psalms, the goodness of God endureth continually. I'll read from the Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Creator, spirit, mind, intelligence, the animating divine principle of all that is real and good. God who made all that was made and could not create an atom or an element the opposite of himself. In the Gospel of John, it is declared that all things were made through the word of God 
and without him, the logos or word was not anything made that was made. Everything good or worthy, God made. Whatever is valueless or baneful, he did not make, hence its unreality. In the science of Genesis, we read that he saw everything which he had made, and behold, it was very good. God is individual, incorporeal. He is divine principle, love, the universal cause, the only creator, and there is no other self-existence. He is all-inclusive and is reflected by all that is real and eternal and by nothing else. If thought is startled at the strong claim of science for the supremacy of God or truth and doubts the supremacy of good, ought we not, contrarywise, to be astounded at the vigorous claims of evil and doubt them, and no longer think it natural to love sin and unnatural to forsake it, no longer imagine evil to be ever-present and good absent, truth should not seem so surprising and unnatural as error, and error should not seem so real as truth. There is but one creator and one creation. This creation consists of the unfolding of spiritual ideas and their identities, which are embraced in the infinite mind and forever reflected. These ideas range from the infinitesimal to infinity, and the highest ideas are the sons and daughters of God. Isaiah, thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Genesis 2, 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Thus the ideas of God and universal being are complete and forever expressed. For science reveals infinity and the fatherhood and motherhood of love. All that is made is the work of God, and all is good. We leave this brief, glorious history of spiritual creation, as stated in the first chapter of Genesis, in the hands of God, not of man, in the keeping of spirit, not matter, joyfully acknowledging now and forever God's supremacy, omnipotence, and omnipresence. All substance, intelligence, Wisdom, being, immortality, cause, and effect belong to God. No wisdom is wise but his wisdom. No truth is true. No love is lovely. No life is life but the divine. No good is but the good God bestows. The true understanding of God is spiritual. It destroys the false evidence that misleads thoughts, that misleads thought and points to other gods or other so-called powers, such as matter, disease, sin, and death, superior or contrary to the one spirit. Christianity causes men to turn naturally from matter to spirit as the flower turns from darkness to light. Denial of the claims of matter is a great step towards the joys of spirit, towards human freedom, and the final triumph over the body. Science inevitably lifts one's being higher in the scale of harmony and happiness. Daniel, blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Isaiah, Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him, 
Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heaven with the span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number? He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might. For that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Joshua. The children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. And Moses sware on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, ever since, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. Psalms. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. God is mind. All that mind God is or hath made is good, and he made all. Mind, joyous in strength, dwells in the realm of mind. Divine mind is the only cause or principle of existence. Cause does not exist in matter, in mortal mind, or in physical forms. As God is substance and man is the divine image and likeness, man should wish for, and in reality has, only the substance of good, the substance of spirit, not matter. God expresses in man the infinite idea, forever developing itself, broadening and rising higher and higher from a boundless basis. We can and ultimately shall so rise as to avail ourselves in every direction of the supremacy of truth over error, life over death, and good over evil. And this growth will go on until we arrive at the fullness of God's idea, and no more fear that we shall be sick and die. Step by step will those who trust him find that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Isaiah. I create the fruit of the lips, peace, Peace to him that is far off, and to him that is near, saith the Lord. 1 Samuel And there was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. Now therefore... Know and consider 
what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his household. For he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took two hundred loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and an hundred clusters of raisins and two hundred cakes of figs and laid them on asses. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me let this iniquity be. And now this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me, and blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou, which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with mine own hand. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. Psalms. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. The Christian science God is universal, eternal, divine love, which changeth not and causes, causeth no evil, disease, nor death. If men understood their real spiritual source to be all blessedness, they would struggle for recourse to the spiritual and be at peace. But the deeper the error into which mortal mind is plunged, the more intense the opposition to spirituality, till error yields to truth. It is our ignorance of God, the divine principle, which produces apparent discord and the right understanding of him restores harmony. Mortals must gravi gravitate Godward. Their affections and aims grow spiritual. They must near the broader interpretations of being and gain some proper sense of the infinite in order that sin and mortality may be put off. This scientific sense of being, forsaking matter for spirit, by no means suggests man's absorption into deity and the loss of his identity, but confers upon man enlarged individuality, a wider sphere of thought and action, a more expansive love, a higher and more permanent peace. The substance, life, intelligence, truth, and love, which constitute deity, are reflected by his creation. And when we subordinate the false testimony of the corporeal senses to the facts of science, we shall see this true likeness and reflection everywhere. God fashions all things after his own likeness. Life is reflected in existence, truth in truthfulness, God in goodness, which impart their own peace and permanence. Psalms. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Jeremiah. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Ephesians. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Luke. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. 
And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. God, good, can no more produce sickness than goodness can cause evil and health occasion disease. If God causes man to be sick, sickness must be good, and its opposite, health, must be evil, for all that he makes is good and will stand forever. But if sickness and sin are illusions, the awakening from this mortal dream or illusion will bring us into health, holiness, and immortality. This awakening is the forever coming of Christ, the advanced appearing of truth which casts out error and heals the sick. This is the salvation which comes through God, the divine principle, love, as demonstrated by Jesus. It would be contrary to our highest ideas of God to suppose him capable of first arranging law and causation so as to bring about certain evil results, and then punishing the helpless victims of his volition for doing what they could not avoid doing. As mortals reach, through knowledge of Christian science, a higher sense, they will seek to learn not from matter but from the divine principle, God, how to demonstrate the Christ truth as the healing and saving power. Because the so-called material body is a mental concept and governed by mortal mind, it manifests only what that so-called mind expresses. Therefore, the efficient remedy is to destroy the patient's false belief by both silently and audibly arguing the true facts in regard to harmonious being. Representing man as healthy instead of diseased, and showing that it is impossible for matter to suffer, to feel pain or heat, to be thirsty or sick. Destroy fear, and you end fever. When man is governed by God, the ever-present mind who understands all things, man knows that with God all things are possible. The only way to this living truth, which heals the sick, is found in the science of divine mind as taught and demonstrated by Christ Jesus. Psalms. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. The real jurisdiction of the world is in mind, controlling every effect and recognizing all causation as vested in divine mind. Mortals must look beyond fading, finite forms if they would gain the true sense of things. Where shall the gaze rest? But in the unsearchable realm of mind. We must look where we would walk, and we must act as possessing all power from him in whom we have our being. When we realize that life is spirit, never in nor of matter, this understanding will expand into self-completeness, finding all in God good and needing no other consciousness. Spirit and its formations are the only realities of being. When we learn the way in Christian science and recognize man's spiritual being, we shall behold and understand God's creation all the glories of earth and heaven and man.
During the offertory, if you would like to make a donation, we ask that you place your offering in the pouches on either side of the congregation, observing social distancing, or consider making a donation online, thirdchurchnyc.com. Let's sing hymn number 62. From all that dwell below the skies, let the Creator's praise arise. Let the Redeemer's name be sung through every land by every tongue. Hymn number 62. I'll read the scientific statement of being from the Christian Science textbook. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. And the correlative scripture from 1 John. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Thus saith the Lord that created thee, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Amen. Amen. 